Good evening, sir. Friends, it's the Middle Man coming at you again from Walker's Music. Also known as the Deacon on my other Facebook page. This video should be placed on my Facebook page as well as YouTube. First of all, we want to give all the honor to God, praise and glory, majesty, everything belongs to God. Nothing beside him, there is no God. And we thank him for his darling son, Jesus. Yes, you are for those of you that love to hear it in Hebrew. If you see my title, and it's a very long title, I don't use, I don't normally use long titles like this, but I had to try to get it over. I'm, tr I'm trying to get a, a point over to everybody. In other words, writing a book does not mean that the writer is right. Let me say that again. Writing a book does not mean that the writer is right. People, let me say something. And I, I took a whole day pondering on this subject before I decided that the Lord would turn me loose on it. And so I am turned loose. And now I got to speak. What I've learned, what I've learned from the scripture, and what I've learned from the Apostle Paul, as well as certain other teachers of the gospel that teach it, in my opinion, rightly. Now, I've been telling y'all for quite some time now about all these people that, that we need to give that law a rest. Now, let me explain something to y'all. And please, put on your thinking caps. Put on your thinking caps with me now. I'm not speaking that the law is bad, because no, the law is not bad. That Mosaic law that God gave Moses for the Israelites, listen at me now, he gave that Mosaic law for the Israelites, not you Gentiles, not you, it wasn't written for you. There was nothing wrong with the law. Jesus wrote it. Yeshua, for do you like to call it in Hebrew? But Paul explicitly explained to us the reason why that law was given to the Israelites, not to you Gentiles. For all of you that keep talking about we are no longer under the law, you never was under the law if you were Gentile. The law was written for the Jew, for the Israelite, to show them it was to condemn them. They never could keep it. And it was written for them to show them their shortcoming. That's what the Apostle Paul told us in the New Testament. When they was trying to get Titus, which Titus was a Greek. He was a Greek. But he was converted to Christianity by the Apostle Paul. He was converted but he was a Greek. He had a Greek father, if I'm not mistaken. I know that much to be true. And when they were trying to go back to the church at Jerusalem, see, first of all, let me tell y'all what I'm trying to do. Let me tell you what I'm trying to do, first of all, because I'm, I done got way ahead of myself just that quick. Keep Titus on your mind. But let me tell you why I'm, I'm doing this video, trying to explain this. Going into my motivational section and on Facebook as the deacon. I heard this morning, today, quote unquote, if I, I'm not going to call the name, because if I call the name, you will absolutely, you will know exactly whom I'm talking about and what ministry I'm talking about. That's not the scope. I'm not here to bash nobody's ministry. I'm not here to bash nobody's theology, but I am going to speak the truth. I saw and I heard this morning, and it just almost knocked me over out of this chair. Or talking about the church, the church is grafted into Israel. People, come on, what kind of ludicrous, foolish mess is that? Don't you know the church was Israel? <laughs> Jesus, how you gonna graft something in Israel that already belong to the Israel? Huh? People, listen to me, the man. Listen to the deacon, please. Read your Bible. Study. If you notice, Jesus
Jesus told Peter, when Peter, on Peter's confession, that faith that he had on who Jesus was, and Jesus told him, said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus said, blessed are thou, Simon bar Jonah. He said, blessed are you. He said, because flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father only. See, he said, and upon this rock, in other words, not upon Peter, but upon this rock, what he was talking about, that profession of faith, that revelation knowledge, that is the rock that Jesus was talking about. He said, upon that rock, which means the revelation knowledge of who I am, that's what I'm going to build my church on. That's what he's going to build his church on. Jesus said that. Now, look at what Jesus said. Upon this rock, this revelation knowledge of who I am, which my father only could have given you, that's what I'm going to build my church on. Now, let me tell you all something. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. That was his prime reason for coming, to destroy the works of the devil, and which, which was one of Satan's greatest works is when he got us to sin to separate us from the Father. That was one of his greatest works. Jesus came to fix that. Okay, look at, read and study your Bible, people. Study your gospel. Look at what Jesus went about doing. Now, remember, the, the law was given to the Israelites. God was going to deal with the nation of Israel to get Jesus into this world. That was the purpose, people. And if you notice, the Bible is a, is a Jewish book written by Jews for Jews. Now, you got, some, you got some people in the Bible that it talks about all the Gentile, that's of other nations that the Bible mentions. But if you look, the Bible is basically a book for the Jews, written by the Jews. That's it. God was dealing with Israel to get Jesus into the picture. Remember, he, got, he called Abram out of the land of the Chaldees of Ur. Abram was a Gentile. But when God called him out, see, when God separates you, for something and for a specific purpose. It don't make no difference what you used to be. You are now a new creature when God gets you. So when he called Abraham out, he took Abram and Sarai, which was his half-sister, but he was also his wife. And he used Abram and Sarai to become the, nation, the father and mother of the nation of Israel. God created the nation of Israel just like he created Adam. Yeah, he started with a Gentile, two Gentiles. Abram and Sarai were Gentile. But when he called them out, he started building and making and creating the nation of Israel from them. And he told Abram, he said, Yo see the seed, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the promised seed of Abraham. And he said, by that seed, all nations will be blessed. So you see, we all get the blessing, but we didn't all get the law. You understand what I'm saying? So now listen to me. Now once the seed of Abraham came, that was Jesus. And then it said, Jesus said, I come to destroy the works of the devil. I come to reverse it. Jesus came to get us back to the Father. But now, if you notice Jesus' Jesus' ministry, when he called the 12 disciples, all of them were Jews. Every one of them were Jews. All right? Not only were every one of them Jews, but now do you remember, I'm just going to quote a few, but it got, it, Jesus dealt with a lot of Gentiles. Jesus dealt with a lot of Gentiles, but I'm just going to name about two or three. The Syrophoenician woman, her daughter was cutting the fool and sick and about to die and everything. She came to Jesus for him to heal them. Jesus said, I only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I, it's not meat for me to get a children bread to dogs. You see that? That's what Jesus called her, a dog. We were Gentiles. We were considered dogs. You understand that? But look what this, the Syrophoenician woman told Jesus. She said, yeah, Lord, but even the dogs sit up under the master's table and eat crumbs. Jesus said, I ain't seen so great a faith as this. Go, woman. 
Your faith has saved your daughter. Go, your daughter be all right. You see, he had mercy on the Gentile, giving us a foreknowledge that the Gentile was going to be a part of this thing after a while. Jesus kept on hinting at it. All right? Another Gentile. Let us look at the, the centurion. He was a Roman. He had a servant that was sick. Told Jesus, come on and heal it. Jesus said, I'll go with you and heal it. But he, the, the, the Roman centurion said, no, 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 Lord. I'm not worthy that you would even enter my house. I'm not even worthy. But you just speak the word, and I know my servant will be healed. He said, I'm a man upon authority, just like you. I say to one soldier, go. I know he's going to go. And I say to one, come. I know he's going to come. And I can recognize authority, and I know that you got this authority. All you got to do is speak the word, and I know it will be done. Jesus turned to Israel. He said, yes, I have not seen so great a faith, not in all Israel, that this is a Roman soldier. Hey, he is a heathen, and he got more faith than y'all do. That was the second. Now, I'm going to use those two examples. Showing us that we were going to be grafted into the family after a while. But it wasn't yet, because Jesus hadn't went to the cross. Now, Jesus went to the cross, paid the debt for sin. Told the veil in two, making access to God, not only for the Jew, but for me too. Huh? Because you see, people, the law was given to the Israelites. But now let me show you something. On the day of Pentecost, there was 120 what up and up in the room. There wasn't a black person up there nowhere. And if he was, he had to be a Jew. He was a Jew. So in other words, this is what I'm trying to portray the Bible. I'm not trying to tell you anything that the Bible, oh my God, hadn't already told you. Um, this is that what Jesus was speaking. In other words, the law was given. This is what the Apostle Paul was telling them about his servant Titus, his brother Titus. Titus, you can't put that law on him, have him circumcised. That ain't that he's not a he's not a Jew. And even to the Jew, if you're a Jew and you, Jesus said you need to circumcise your heart, people. How can we, the church, be grafted in? I heard this this morning, and I, I heard this this morning, and I almost fell over that this chair. What do you mean the church is grafted into Israel? That don't even make no sense. The church was Israel. It was 120 Israelis up in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell. It feel all them was Jews. The church did not, the, 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 the Gentiles didn't come into the church until Cornelius. And he was a Roman of the Italian band. That's when the, the Gentiles start coming into the family of God at that particular point in time, people. You, you can't graft something into something that's already doubt, but it belongs to them. The church was born in Israel with, with Jews in the upper room, all Jews. We came later by the grace of God, in the, which is Jesus. He opened up the door, the seed of Abraham that was going to make it right for everybody in the world. Y'all, that's how we as Gentiles came into the church. The, the church is Jerusalem. The church is Israel. You can't grab something into something that's already there. It belongs to the, to, to, to the Israelites. The church was born right there in Jerusalem in the upper room when they was all filled with the Holy Ghost. We were grafted into the church by the grace of God, which is Jesus, or Yeshua people. That's all me the man want to say. I could say more. God knows I could say more. But I don't think I have to. You ought to see by this, when you hear all these people, just because they got books written and they got big, large churches that a whole lot of people, that don't mean they know what they're talking about. Because when you say the church was grafted into Israel, that's nonsense. Just like when you say the church had replaced Israel, that's nonsense. People, we were, as Gentiles, we were the one grafted into the family of God. We were one grafted into the church. We were one grafted into the welfare of Israel. We Gentile. We never had a law. The law never was written for. It was written for the Jews. 
and it was to show them their shortcoming. Read the Apostle Paul. Read the book of Romans. It'll tell you that. It'll tell you that. That law was a schoolmaster to show them their shortcoming, even the Jews which the law was written for. The Mosaic law was written for the Israelites. Nobody else on the world. That was only written for them, and they couldn't keep it. In fact, before why the Moses, why God was giving Moses the Ten Commandments on the mountain top, they were dying in the valley, sinning and breaking them at the same time. Before they even received the law, they had them broken. And then when Moses got down to the foot of the hill and saw the calf, he broke all up. So they, they, that law was given to them to show them their need for that common Savior, that word to come, which was Yeshua, if you're Hebrew. Jesus, as you look like me and talk like me. That's it, people. Please, please, I beg, I beseech you, as Paul said. I beseech you. Don't fall prey to these people because they are sporty and they got their books on display that they don't wrote. That don't mean they know what they're talking about. And if I'm wrong, I, I tell y'all all the time, if many man, the deacon is wrong, if God and the Holy Spirit if let me see it and show me where I'm wrong, I promise you I'm going to come back and I'm going to do another video. And I'm going to let y'all know, no, I was wrong. It's like this. I got a new revelation. The Spirit told me this. But all this here, you taking these young people word verbatim just because they got a book written. You better be careful about that. Just because you got a book written, just because you got a mega church and everything, that don't mean that they know what they're talking about all the time. Because, I mean, I done seen it. I done heard so much error from these big mega churches until I'm telling you I'm about sick to my stomach with it. And I just couldn't hold this no more about the church done grafted into Israel. Lord, how many, what kind of ludicrous stuff is that? That is plain ludicrous. And if you read the scriptures and study your scriptures, the New Testament, especially about the Apostle Paul, when he's talking about this here, you will see for yourself that it's ludicrous to say that you the church grafted into Israel and that the church done to replace Israel. All of that is foolishness. And it's not true. Not according to what I've read. So this is the man saying, whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God ain't in the people, come out of it. But let us rightly divide the word of truth. And if we find ourselves that we've been misled or we don't, we were wrong in our uh, 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 rightly dividing the truth, then it's up to us to come back and apologize and try to make it straight. But people, don't believe everybody just because they got a book at Amazon or Barnes & Noble or they got a great big mega church. That don't mean they always know what they're talking about. You better be careful and listen very closely to what they're saying because a lot of what I hear is just plain false and it's wrong to the core. Now, whether they're making a mistake or a slip of the tongue, I don't know. I judge no man. But I know a whole lot of this stuff that I hear is absolutely wrong according to the Bible I read. Now, that's all I'm going to say. This is many man. Say peace and good night.